Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching the 13th episode of the Scaling Rail screencast series, supported by New Relic. In this episode, we'll be talking with Jim Gochi, who's the Director of Engineering at New Relic, and then we'll be looking at some of the advanced features of New Relic's RPM service. I'm here with Jim Gochi, who is the VP of Engineering at New Relic. And New Relic has an, a product called RPM, which allows you to monitor the performance of your Rails applications and see where you need to optimize. So I thought I'd ask Jim to give us three tips on how to optimize and scale our Rails applications. Uh, my first recommendation is to use uh, real production data and real production environments to analyze and study your application's behavior. Uh, you might want to do things like load test directly on production as opposed to trying to set up a canned environment and using a tool like RPM can give you information about how your application is really performing. Uh, my second piece of advice uh, is to look at how to optimize your use of the database. That tends to be the biggest bottleneck in a web application. Uh, so I recommend first of all caching so you don't have to hit the database. Uh, secondly, I recommend you know, really digging into SQL itself, understanding what makes queries fast or slow, learn how to use explain. Uh, and then lastly, you know, really make sure you know how to get active record uh, to work for you and to generate the most efficient queries that it can. Uh, my third piece of advice is if you're using Mongrel, uh, use HAProxy with a MaxCon of one in front of it. Uh, requests can queue up in Mongrel, and what we see from a lot of the customers uh, who's, uh, use, who use RPM is that uh, requests can spend a significant amount of time uh, queued up. Uh, and if you use a smart uh, load balancer like HAProxy, uh, you eliminate that problem and your site will see much better throughput and the customer will experience better end response time. So in the fourth screencast, if you haven't watched it yet, we went over the basic features of New Relic RPM, both the free and the bronze tier services. Now we're going to be taking a look at the silver reports you can see here, starting out with transaction traces. To get to transaction traces, we're going to start out on the controllers report. So you remember this is the page where we could actually see the slowest controller actions. We can click on one of those and it gives us a breakdown about where this controller is spending its time. Well, if you've got RPM Silver and you look down to the bottom of the screen, you're going to see this thing that says 162 transaction traces. What these are are actual samples of requests that came through to this action. If we click on that, we can see here, here are the slowest, starting with the slowest request to this particular action. And what we can do is we can click on that and dive down to see exactly what happened for this particular request. So we can see here when this came in, um, which server it was processed by, the action, the URL the user went to, the duration, so how long it took to process, wow, it took 16 seconds, and how much CPU time it took up. If we wanted to do a little extra configuration, we could even monitor the parameters here. If we look further down on the page, we get this pie graph, which shows us that, well, the majority of the time was spent actually waiting for probably authorized.net to do a transaction. Now, if we click on the Details tab, we actually get a listing of everything that this request called. So you can see here, it started out with a bunch of find methods. It looks like those find methods were really quick. They were probably coming out of memcached. And then we can scroll down the page and see where it took the most of its time and figure out where we might need to improve things. And sure enough, it took 15 seconds to do that call through Active Merchant. The other cool thing about the Details tab is you see those little database icons over there? Well, if I hover over any one of those, it's actually going to show me the SQL that was generated for that Active Record call. Next up is the SQL tab. And what this shows me is every line of SQL that was called by this action. So I can scroll down and see which ones took a long time, see everything that was generated. It's also worth noting that if any of these SQL statements takes longer than a certain amount of time that I can set, it actually gives me a link. If I click on that link, it shows me a SQL explain and shows me maybe why that SQL statement took too long. Here it looks like uh, it was using an index and uh, also using a temporary table. So we might want to optimize that particular query. Also down below, it shows us exactly where in our code that SQL statement was generated from. This is really useful information. Next up is the errors report. So if at any time our application throws an error, well, it's going to get logged here. We can see that in the past 30 minutes, well, there's been a lot of errors for this application, which I think it's OK. I think a lot of those are just routing errors for Shopify, which is what we're looking at. Um, looks like it's around maybe 70 
errors per minute. And if we look further down on the page, we can see all the different errors that were called. Of course, they're all aggregated together. So you can see up above, there's a count. So there was a, you know, 1146 of the top error message. If we want to learn about the error, we can click on it, and it's going to give us more detail about it, including, you know, what action it was called from, the error message. If we do a little extra configuration, we can even get it to print out the params and the source. We can actually see some source code and see where it was actually triggered right here in this page if we do some additional configuration. And of course, down below, you get your standard error trace. Next up is the incident report. Now, as you've seen, New Relic collects a ton of metric data about your Rails application. With the incidents report, it actually starts making intelligent guesses at how your application is behaving. And if it behaves badly, well, then it's going to let you know. It's going to send up a flag. So if we zoom in here, we can take a look. The last two incidents were the database went from 10% to 24%. Might want to take a look at that and see why that was. Also, there's a bunch of errors that were triggered, maybe a little more than we're used to. Might want to take a look at that too. If we click on one of those, it's going to give us a full report of what it's found. This one is showing that a couple different things have exceeded the warning threshold. If we look at the graph, we can see that you know, it has a threshold of 45 errors per minute before it's going to notify us. The next graph down is going to show us throughput, and it looks like at 11 o'clock we surpassed 1,300 calls per minute. So. Um, we might want to see what happened at 11 o'clock. Over here in the bottom right, we have a graph showing CPU, and it looks like between 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock, we exceeded the CPU threshold. So that's interesting, too. The neat thing about these incidents as well is that once they go below the threshold, they close themselves. So you don't have to worry about going in there and closing a ticket or you know setting a flag that says, yes, we know. They simply go away. The last report you get access to with Silver is compare with last week, which is very similar to compare with yesterday, except you're looking at, obviously, more data. Well, now we're going to take a look at some of the gold reports. And these just get even cooler. First up is the scalability analysis. Now, this graph looks really cool, but it's kind of hard to read, so I'll try to explain it to you step by step. Starting on the right-hand side of the page, you can see we're color coding a single day. So each hour has a different color of the rainbow. So now if we scroll back over to this graph, you can see on the left-hand side, we've got response time. On the bottom, we've got throughput, right? So we can see at different times of the day, what was the response time and the throughput. And you can see this red orange line showing us the average here in the middle. The idea is you want this line to be even, right? So as the throughput gets higher on your website, as more people hit your website, you don't want the response time to change. So Shopify.com can scale pretty well, because we can see even with these outliers over here where throughput got really high, it still stayed at a good response time. We can even hover over one of these dots and get a little bit more information. If we scroll back up at the top of the page, you'll notice that we can also show this graph in regard to the last 24 hours or seven days. We can also show CPU time and see how CPU time was affected by throughput, or even database, how database was affected by throughput. Interesting stuff. Next up is the response time report, which can show us several different things, starting with our slowest controller actions. So here you can see the apply theme action took six seconds. And what's neat about this report is it shows us how long it took to run yesterday and a week ago. So we can see if things have gotten progressively worse. Maybe if we change some code, did a deploy, uh-oh, that function actually got worse. If we scroll back up to the top of this page, there's a link here called Show Options. If we click that, we can change what this report shows us. The most interesting one on this list, in my opinion, is throughput times response time, which is a really good way of seeing where you might want to scale your Rails app and get the best bang for your buck. So over here, we can see that um, the shop controller action called collections um, takes 136 milliseconds to run and has a throughput of uh, 263 clicks per minute. So that might be the best function for us to optimize. Um, it would improve response time for a lot of users. Once we've optimized this action, we can then come back to this report later and see how quickly it's running compared to yesterday and the week before. 
The other really interesting report here is allowing us to figure out who were the biggest backsliders for yesterday or for the entire week. We're talking about functions that have actually gotten slower. So here we can see these functions here, the one at the top, for some reason it just got really slower since the last time it run either yesterday or the week before. We might want to take a look. Did we maybe do a deploy which changed that code which made it slower? Well, maybe it's worth taking a look at the ones at the top. The last thing you get access to with the gold tier RPM service is the ability to compare your stats with four weeks ago. Also the same sort of thing with like last week and then yesterday with the uh, bronze tier. Now before we go, I wanted to show you some of the ways that you can configure the RPM service to make it work even better for you. The first thing you can do is have it ignore certain controllers or actions. So if you put this line of code up at the top of your controller, well it wouldn't get any metrics recorded for it. In the Shopify application we were looking at before, they might want to put this in some of those administrator you know, controllers, which is a, you know, it's a good candidate for this sort of stuff. We don't really care if our admin pages run slow. You can also specify you know, which actions you want it to or which ones you don't want it to. Um, also you can annotate the transaction traces and error snapshots, which are really cool. So you can do something like this. Where would this be useful? Well, those transaction traces basically are a snapshot of a single request coming into the system, right? Well, we can actually have it log which user that request was coming from. Right. So then maybe if later on the line we improve it, we can actually go through and log into that user, see if it's that slow, and you know, hopefully it's improved. Lastly, there's the add method tracer function. So if you add this piece of code, you can tell it to collect metrics on a specific function in your application that maybe it wouldn't otherwise. Well, I'm afraid we've reached the end of the screencast, so if you haven't tried New Relic RPM yet for your Rails app in production, maybe you should give it a try if you haven't yet. Um, also, if you're around the net in the next couple weeks, the next couple months, and you find really good resources like a good blog entry about scaling Rails or a good library that might be useful, do me a favor, come back to the website where you found the screencast and post that link to where you would normally find the comments. That way we can create a great repository of resources for scaling Rails. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any feedback, feel free to email me at greg at railsnv.com. Be happy to hear from you. I hope you found these screencasts useful. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>